Hey guys, in this video we'll be going through the steps to send an email with the AWS Simple Email Service from a .NET Core API. You can follow the steps I'll be going through in this tutorial with the link in the video description. The .NET Core API that I'll be using is a boilerplate API that I posted a while back. I won't be going into the details of the code of the API in this video, but all of the um, API code is covered in detail at this blog post linked to here and specifically the email sending code is focused on in this other blog post that I've linked to here. In this video we'll be focusing on the configuration of AWS SES for sending email and then the downloading and the configuring of the API to connect with AWS SES to send the email and then the actual testing of that. Okay, the first step is that we'll need to verify some email addresses in AWS SES for sending and receiving email. Um, if you don't have an AWS account yet, you can log into the Amazon console, the AWS console with this link and create an account over there. Once you're in there, you can go to the simple email service section and we'll um, verify the from and to email addresses that we'll be sending from and to. Uh, SES accounts or AWS SES accounts start with uh, sandbox access, in which case you need to verify both the from and the to addresses that you're sending from and to. Once you have full production access, which you can request, then you only need to verify the from address that you're sending from and you can send to any address. Um, the account I'll be using is still in sandbox mode, so I'll be verifying both the from and to addresses. So jumping over to the console, I'm already logged in here. So I'll go to the simple email service and going to email addresses. You can see I don't have any email addresses verified yet. Um, I found a service a couple of days ago that's perfect for testing use cases like this called tempmail.org. I'll open it in a private browser to prevent any ads from popping up. Um, this site, when it loads, generates a temporary email address and inbox that you can use for cases like this. So I'll copy that email address that we'll use as our from address. Select verify email address. Enter that there. And this says that it's sent a verification email to that address and it's put the status as pending. So if I jump back over to that temporary address, the verification email should pop up. There it is. If I copy the verification link into a new tab, that should verify the address. And it says address has been verified, so I'll close that tab, refresh the addresses in SES and the status is verified. I'll do that for one more address as the recipient address. So this address I don't need the inbox for anymore so I'll click as I'm using it as the from address. I'll click delete to generate a new temporary address that I'll use as the to address for our testing. Okay, there's the new address, it's going back, and I'll go through the same steps to verify. Verify this address, again that's in pending status, if I go back here there's the verification email. Copying to a new tab, that's verified. So going back to the console and you can see they're both verified there. Now to see um, the current production status that you're in in AWS SES, you can go to sending statistics and see that my production status is currently sandbox. If you want to request full production access to be enabled, click edit your account details select yes for enable production access, enter your website URL and use case description, 
and submit for review. And as I mentioned, once you have full, once you have production access enabled, you can send, uh, you, you still need to verify your from address, but you can send to any address. Your, your recipient addresses don't need to be verified. Okay, going back to the tutorial. The next step is that we need to create some SMTP credentials that our .NET Core API will be using to authenticate to the AWS SMTP service when it is sending emails. So to do that, we'll go to SMTP settings and select create my SMTP credentials. This will take you to the IAM, AWS IAM service section to create a new AWS user that has access to send email. If you click show more information, you can see that this user will have allow access to the SES send raw email action. You can enter your own custom username or you can leave it as the default provided. I'll leave it as the default, click create. Once that user is created, click show credentials. And this is the only time that the uh, password is going to be displayed. So I make a copy of those. So we'll need those for the next step when we configure the API. So I'll just paste those into a notepad file for now. And jumping back. All right, next step is to download, configure, and start the .NET Core Boilerplate API. If you don't have it installed already, you'll need the .NET Core SDK that you can download from this link. Um, that includes the .NET CLI that we'll be using to build and run our API. Once you have that installed, you can go to GitHub and uh, grab the repo URL for the example project. Close that tab and then open a command window. And to clone the project, I'll just clone it into my home directory with git clone, paste the project URL, and then cd into the project folder. Next, I want to open the project in a code editor. I'm using VS Code, but you can use uh, whatever editor you prefer. Alright, this is all the code for the boilerplate project. As I mentioned, I won't be going into the details of the project in this video, other than uh, editing the app settings, and specifically the email settings that we've been working on. So first thing, we'll change the email from address to the address that we set. So here's the step in the tutorial, set the email from to the address that we verified in AWS. So going back to AWS, simple email service, email addresses, and pretty sure this is the from address. I'll just double check over at tempmail. Yep, so that's the to address, which makes that the from address. And paste that there. Next, we have the SMTP host, which you can get from SMTP settings, and that's the server name. So we'll copy that and paste that in the SMTP host field. Next is the SMTP user and pass, which are the credentials that we copied before into the notepad file. Copy the SMTP username, paste that there, and then the SMTP password, paste there, and save. And going back to tutorial, next we'll start the API by running .NET run in the command window. So .NET run. Okay, the API started and you can see that it's listening on localhost port 4000. The next and final step is to actually send email from the .NET Core API using AWS SES. 
the way we'll get the API to send email is by making a HTTP request directly to the API to the registration or the register route to register a new account, which will to register a new account with the API. So not to be confused with the emails that we've created in AWS. So we'll be registering an account within the API, which will trigger a verification email to be sent from the API to the email address that uh, that we register with the, within the uh, the email of the post body that we send to the API, and that email email will be sent via the AWS Simple Email Service. The tool we'll be using to make the HTTP request directly to the API is called Postman. If you don't have that installed yet, you can download it at this link. I already have it installed over here. This is what it looks like to make a new request. Open a new tab like that. We'll be making a post request and I'll get the URL from here to the account register route and selecting the body tab, setting the body type to JSON, copying the example body content here that is required by the register route of the boilerplate API. The only thing we'll need to change is we'll change the email address to the to email that we have verified in AWS SES. Before I update the email address, I'll just uh, I'll send with this email that we haven't verified just so you can see the error message that comes back from SES when you try to send with an address that hasn't been verified. Okay, there's the error message. You can see the message has been rejected with email address is not verified. And there's the address there. It's going back to the console. Email addresses, I'll grab the to address. And paste that in. There. Send again. Okay, registration successful, which should mean that the email has been sent and we should see it in our temp mail inbox. Let's go back to the inbox. All right, and there it is. That's our email that's been sent from our .NET Core API. All right, and uh, finally in the tutorial, there were just a couple of screenshots of the steps that we just performed. All right, so that's everything, I think. Uh, those are all the steps that you need to do to send email from a .NET Core API using the AWS SES service. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.